Houston Texans, thank you for showing everybody exactly how it's done. CJ Stroud and them Houston Texans, new head coach, new team, rebuild mode, starting up from scratch. They came on strong last year, made the playoffs. Their quarterback looked excellent throughout the regular season. He did his thing. The thing that I like the most about CJ Stroud is that he takes a lot of chances, but he takes calculated, smart chances chances he does not turn the ball over like crazy he is just, he is going to be amazing I love what he did last year but so did the Houston Texans because they were like all right we got our first round draft pick rookie quarterback mm, you know what he did pretty good his rookie year you know let's capitalize on that let's take full advantage of that he'll be on this rookie deal for the next four to five years because obviously they're gonna pick up that fifth year option but then they could extend him by then too, but he'll be on his rookie deal for a little while. He'll be on there for a little while. So you know what? Let's maximize his rookie contract. Team, keep it clean. The Houston Texans have traded for former Bills, former Vikings, wide receiver Stephon Diggs. And we're going to get into it in a couple of seconds. But first, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn the notifications on so you do not miss not a single video. And leave a like on the video. Let's run them likes all the way up because we like a lot what the Houston Texans are doing. So, Stephon Diggs, man, this this makes it official that, because um, usually, you know, every single year, the question gets asked, is Stephon Diggs going to get traded? Is Stephon Diggs going to get moved? Are the Bills going to move on from Stephon Diggs? Is he going to go to a new team? Because Stephon Diggs will have this series of tweets where it's like, oh, uh-oh, something getting ready to go down. And that's been happening for the past couple of years, but obviously nothing went down. Then there was talk that Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen, they didn't have the best relationship. There's a lot of talk about that. I and mean, I know the, the, the sideline arguments, they get overblown in my opinion. Because football is a very competitive sport. So there's going to be heated moments on the sideline. That ain't nothing to me. But then in the offseason, it was still talk to, oh, yeah, Stephon Diggs, he ain't really feeling Josh Allen. They don't have the best relationship, da 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 but, And then we would see the tweets. We would always see the tweets from Stephon Diggs. And they make us wonder, like, man, is he ready to move on from the Bills? But nothing would ever happen until now. But then it's funny because, again, timing is everything. Just a couple days ago, Robert Griffin III, RG3, former first-round draft pick by the Washington Commanders, had a different name back then. But anyway, um, he has his podcast, and he had tweeted out. He said, is Stephon Diggs essential to Josh Allen's success? He has been since he got to Buffalo in 2020. They are better together, and if Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen stay together with the Buffalo Bills this year, their championship window is wide open. Wide open. And somebody responded to that. They said, does Josh Allen benefit from having a top-tier receiver? Yes. Is he essential to his success? No. That's what somebody responded. And then Stephon Diggs saw that. Because you know these football players, they be searching up their names. They always look up their names. But Stephon Diggs said, you sure? And now, a couple of days later, he is out of there. Now, what's even crazy about this whole thing is that the Bills, they take on like a... 31 mil in dead money, something crazy like that for trading Stephon Diggs. That's another big reason why a lot of people, they just thought that Stephon Diggs was not going to be traded at all because of the dead money that was involved with, um, the, with trading Stephon Diggs. But the Bills were like, look, we do not care. We, we, we are willing to get rid of Stephon Diggs, even if we got to take on all that dead money. They were still willing to move their number one receiver. This is, and they lost Gabe Davis, too. They lost him um, to the Jacksonville Jaguars, I believe. So these Bills, man, and they, they got rid of a lot of people, actually, this uh, offseason. They got rid of Jordan Poyer, Tredavious White, uh, Mitch Morse, Gabe Davis, like we talked about, uh, Tyrell Dawson, and Leonard Floyd. So they, they moved on from a lot of people. It, I thought they were going to move on from Von Miller, too, but they ended up redoing his contract. So Bills, like, they, ooh, this has been tough offseason for Bills fans. But let's look at the compensation. What did the Houston Texans give up in order to acquire one Stephon Diggs? Well, the compensation is as follows. Uh, the Bills will receive a 2025, not even a 2024, not even a this year draft, but a 2025, 2025 second round pick. Um, and the Texans... They'll receive Stephon Diggs, of course, and a 2024 sixth round pick and a 2025 fifth round pick. So the Bills gave up Stephon Diggs and a sixth round pick this year and a fifth round pick next year, 
all for uh, the Texans giving up a second round pick next year. So this shows too, to me, in my opinion, especially since the Bills gave up pick a pick this year uh, and one next year. They didn't just give up Stephon Diggs. They said, no, no, we we coming out of here with something. But they gave up they, for them to give up picks, and you the one that's gonna be eating the dead money, like. That like that that shows me like you were really trying to move on from Stefan Diggs. You were done. And again, with them taking that dead money hit, it's like, oof. Now, back to the Houston Texans, what we talked about, man. They um they were already a really good team. They were already a, a really nice team and they were gonna be an up and coming team. Uh in my opinion, you look at the Titans, you look at the Colts, you look at the Jaguars, and then you look at the Texans, the AFC South is theirs. And in my opinion, the AFC South was theirs before this trade, uh, especially what they've been doing this offseason. But let's take a look at their offense right now. So it's C.J. Stroud, obviously, baller. Uh, Joe Mixon, who was getting ready to get released from the Bengals, but then they were like, okay, we ain't going to release. We're going to trade you to the Texans. So they, they sent him to a good team. So that's always nice when a player, a good player, uh, can be traded to a good team so he can continue being good. Anyway, so they got Joe Mixon now too. Already had Nico Collins. Already had Tank Dale. Uh, Dalton Schultz was doing his thing last year, and now they add Stefan Diggs to all of that. Man, <laughs> oh, these Texans, man. Ooh, these Texans, man. I know people will say, oh, Stefan Diggs, he's a bad locker room guy. Stefan Diggs, he's going to be a problem. Hey, look, man, sometimes you just need to change the scenery. That's it. And I know he had to change the scenery in Minnesota, and he went to Buffalo and he started doing well. Hey. But then I needed to change the scenery in Buffalo. I go into the Texans, and I I expect him to do well because he will certainly get his opportunities. I mean, he got his opportunities with Buffalo for sure too, but he will certainly get his opportunities uh, with the Houston Texans and everything that they do. Man, they they are a great team, man. They really are. Now, um, they did add a lot of other people too. This offseason, not just Stephon Diggs, not just Joe Mick. Like, they added some really good – that's two really good players you added off top, like, right there. But also, uh, they added uh, Daniil Hunter. And Daniil Hunter is somebody that I wanted my team to get for a while because Daniil Hunter, he's defensive end, but this dude is nothing but productive. Nothing but productive. He had a neck injury, I think, back in, like, 2020, something like that, a little while back. And he was productive before that, but then he came back, bounced back, and had been productive ever since, too. So his production just literally never stops. They signed him to a, uh, a two-year deal. I forgot how much it's worth. I know he got like maybe 40-something in guaranteed money, something like that. I forgot what it was, but that was a great— So you already got Will Anderson on one side. So now you add Daniil Hunter, one of the most productive defensive ends in the game, one of the most consistently productive defensive ends in the game, and you already had Will Hunter— I mean, excuse me, Will Anderson on the other opposites— Man, it's these Texas boys. They also added uh, the Nico Autry defensive uh, lineman, Jeff Okuda cornerback, CJ Henderson quarterback, Tim Settle. I'm not too familiar with him. Uh, Foley Fatukasi. I'm not too familiar with him. And Tommy Townsend, the punter. Uh, so they've been putting in a lot of work, a whole lot of work. And again, the team that they had was already good, but they just made them a lot better. This is exactly what you have to do. This is the recipe for winning. Because so many times we see to where teams, they might not take full advantage of a rookie quarterback. I mean, a, a, a quarterback on a rookie deal, excuse me. And then it's like, oh, it, you start doing it late. And then it becomes, oh, too little too late. The opportunity is passed. But you see a team like what the Houston Texans are doing with C.J. Stroud, his second year. That's why it's, it's so essential, in my opinion, to do stuff like this. Because obviously, when you pay your quarterback, it does not, it's not the end all be all. It's not like, oh, you pay your quarterback, oh, you can't win anymore. Look at Patrick Mahomes. And I know some people might say, well, he's an anomaly. But because a lot of most of the quarterbacks that have been winning the Super Bowls, they usually be on a rookie deal. But again, it, it's not the end all be all. But this is how you do it. This is how you do it because, you know, once you pay your quarterback, hey, them quarterbacks, boy, they be making some bread, man. And that bread takes up a nice chunk of the salary cap. It does not mean that you can't do anything. It does not mean that. But you want to do even more while your quarterback is making even less. The Texans are doing just that. 
D'Amico Ryans is doing just that. If I knew their general manager's name, I would say he was doing just that. This is how you build around your team.